welcome everybody this is the Meshri dev call and this is December and we'll be starting in about a minute oh, let me share a link for this in the meeting chat Everybody in this call should be able to access this document. If you can't, um, please speak out and we'll get you access. Um, there you go. There's a link in, in the chat. If you can access the doc, please go add your name to the attendees list. Same as Mikul did right now. Thank you for adding my name as well, Nicole. Uh, while we wait for others to join, um, Anirudh, did you have any topic for today? I forgot to catch up with you. No, not really. Actually, I was working on an uh, issue. Uh, I guess someone else was having what was that? Ah, uh, Adesha. Okay. Um, is that the config file issue? Um, yeah. Yeah. All right. If Adesha comes and call today, we can help him out. We have a shorter agenda today. If Adesha doesn't join in. The Adesha is having is a longer one. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, there okay. might be cases that it might extend to a longer duration because <laughs> I already spent about more than an hour during the day today. All right. Great. Has he submitted any logs for the issues having? Um, he has in the on GitHub. I guess he might have. I have no idea. I was on call with him today. All right. Um, and you guys weren't able to figure it out in like a short time. So we know where the, what the issue is, hmm. but uh, the issue must not exist. And that's really an annoying bug because it works on Mac. It doesn't work on Linux. All right. Um, what OS does he use? Uh, which Linux distro? Uh, Ubuntu 20. All right. Oh. That's funny. I am using Ubuntu 20. It works for me. Mm, yeah. So um, that's weird, right? Because uh, it's only his case that I saw that it's not working. And as he also said, Kush also had the same issue. Mm. Yeah, that is weird. All right, um, we're six minutes in, let's start. Um, so we have the O'Reilly Linkery workshop today, which is by um, Lee and Abhishek won't be attending this particular call. Kush should be joining us soon enough though. And anybody on this call can go attend that workshop. I'll add a link here soon enough. Uh, moving on. Is there anybody on this call who hasn't been with us before? If so, you can go ahead and introduce yourself. Say a little bit about yourself. Uh, Siddhan, Siddhan Aruna. If, um... Yeah, I can possibly name the last call. Mm -hmm. ah, all right, um, would you still like to introduce yourself? I'm a third year undergrad. I oh, don't know. I'm currently a final year undergrad from Sri Lanka. So, trying to get into some cloud native application developments here and get the exposure. All right, nice. Um, have you found anything to work with yet? Or any of the projects caught your eye? Yeah, I was trying to get into the ministry, and uh, currently I've been working on that CI on. Uh, release drafter 
and most probably I'll be completing it today. All right, nice. Um, the CI release dropped. Do you mean the GitHub action? Uh, yeah. Thanks. All right. Um, well, moving on to the agenda. Mikul, you're on first. Yes, uh, thank you, Shriti. <clears throat> Sorry. I think I mentioned a couple of weeks ago in uh, on Slack that uh, whether we should upgrade the uh, Go version from 1.13 that we're using now to a uh, new version 1.15. And then um, uh, suggested and, and we said that was a good idea. We should uh, test this and suggested, I suggested that we test it out somewhere and see how it goes. And um, that's what I did a couple of days ago in the console adapter. Um, I increased the uh, version to 115. Um, and uh, actually, it, it worked. Nothing happened at all. Um, no problems whatsoever. Um, I upgraded it and changed it in a few places. There's one place it is in the Go mod file, uh, the other place is in the Docker file, and the third place is as a secret in the uh, in the in the workflow on GitHub, where we have a secret which is called Go version that also needs to be changed, which is used in some of the workflows. Um, so, not so much to report about that. I wonder whether uh, I have to change or whether this has to be changed in some other places as well, except for the documentation. Mm -hmm. So we created uh, an issue um, for that. I think it's sort of like the contributing to update the contribution document. I can post this uh, here. Um, so this is the issue, uh, the general issue that needs to be updated. So I can also work on that one. Um, but I guess I would need some um, feedback and help with the review. I'm not a, a Go uh, specialist. And uh, usually my IDE is just fixing everything so that I don't have to worry about this. Um, but I can work on that and then <clears throat> ask for a review just to make sure that all the Go details are actually correct. One thing I just wondered about is whether we, um, now we're moving towards 115, but for a, you know, for a certain amount of time, we'll be using 113 uh, for sure. Mm -hmm. And in the documentation, as I saw now, uh, there was, uh, I think 111 was mentioned. Uh, so I just wonder whether we should just go for 115 and update the documentation to that, or whether we should sort of have a bit more fine grade upgrade. I don't know if anyone has any feedback about that or actually whether from a technical point of view this should be updated uh, also in another place. Of course, in all sort of other repositories, this has to be done, looked at. But I think these are the most important places. On the road? Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, so I think going to 115 is the best and mentioning 115 yeah. after because we don't have versioning on documentation, right? At least for now. No. Oh, no, we so don't. Until and unless we have versioning, we don't have to worry about fine graining and telling that uh, we use 113 now and then move to 115. So it's, I guess it's better, better to use mention 115 on the doc. Also, like, uh, is Meshri backend and all other adapters, are they on 115 or still on 113? Well, I think, I guess most are on 113. It's also, yeah, I think, at least I don't know anything else. So I think the, the console adapter is the first one where I did the experimentation to um, upgrade to yeah. 115. But it's not released on 115 yet. I did it a couple yeah. of days ago just to test whether it is. Okay. Yeah, the, the backend is on uh, Meshri backend is on one thirteen. We can also upgrade that, like if that's important or necessary. We can yeah. upgrade this. I think it's about uh, two years old. Is that possible? One thirteen. 
and um, I, I think it would be good to upgrade. Um, one thing is not that I noticed anything about this, but that the actually the official module support uh, mm -hmm. was introduced in the 114. So I think from that point of view, it would be good. And also, what I have read is uh, that between 114 and 115, the size of the binary was reduced by about uh, five percent. Sort of the size of the binary mm. compared and produced about five percent smaller. So there's a. It makes sense to move all the modules to 115 then. Yeah. That's good. But then can I sort of put you as a reviewer on the PR once I've updated the um, documentation so that you can make sure that. Yeah, sure. Everything's okay. Oh, that's yeah. excellent. Thank you. That was Anirudh, right? Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Thanks. All right. Yeah, um, so that, that was it, yeah. Yep. Um, I was just informed that Utkarsh won't be able to join us today, at least. Um, Anirudh, can we talk about log streaming with QAPI? Wait, 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 wait. OK. OK, we just we had that on the agenda. Uh, no, nope, but I can add it for you. A bit later then, a bit later. Oh, all right, uh, do you need to do some setup? Yeah. Okay. All right, uh, in the meanwhile, does anybody else have any other topic? We're a little short in the agenda today. Mainly because a few of the people are busy with the LinkedIn -E workshop that is currently going on. Uh, on the workshop, uh, is there a link to join the workshop and what time? Um, it's actually currently going on and yep, sure, I'll get you a link in just a second. Okay. All right. Um... All right, in the meanwhile, if anybody else has an issue or a topic, please speak up while you think on all the topics that you have. I'll um, actually the workshop is, I'm not very sure this is right, but I think it's a private one from O'Reilly. So I'm not very sure if you can join. So then. Oh, okay. Right, um, in the meanwhile, let me ask this. Uh, this was demoed in the last community call, but we've moved this to a layer five account now. And if anybody wants to go try out tutorials uh, specifically made for Meshri and at the moment, we only have tutorials set up for the particular service meshes and their basic tutorials, which run you through installing meshery, setting it up, installing a particular mesh, or running, a, running any of the sample apps. And these are based on the Catacoda platform and you can go run them and hopefully learn a bit about meshery, a bit about deploying it, a bit about working with service meshes in particular. And if you want to try these, I'll place a link in the development meeting while Android sets up. Um, this is also a great way to, for any of the newcomers to go just start out with Meshri or not do the entire setup on your local and get a feel of the, um, project without bludgeoning your local system. Uh, there you go. 
you shouldn't need anything to run these. These are public tutorials. One or two of these are still a little bit in a trial phase. So if you find any errors, please report them back to us and we'll fix them. And yep, that's it. Can you share the link of the chat box? Uh, the chat box? Yeah. The Zoom chat box? Yeah, yeah. Oh, no? Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, Vishal, do you have access to this um, meeting minutes doc? Yeah, yes. All oh, right. I just wanted to check. Uh, there you go. It's in the chat as well. Um, Anirudh, about ready? No pressure. Sort of. <laughs> All right. Um, let, me, let me just see where. Yeah. Okay, let's, so this is the program. I'll just see if so it's a certain name. So, okay. So I'm going to share my screen. Okay, so it's visible. Yep, it is. Okay, so uh, I'm currently using a GK cluster for running the application. Um, So this is the streaming project uh, that actually working on. So this basically uses the cube, uh, cube, cube API log, which is the client. So the Kubernetes client exposes a, a fly, pod client with which I can get the logs from um, the Kubernetes cluster, right? So here, uh, I think I have created an Nginx, Nginx point, right? So, this is uh, like, I guess it's mentioned here that it's gRPC, but it actually it's not gRPC and it's a simple WebSocket connection. So people, uh, should they can update that? Uh, yeah, sure. So that's, it's, it's using a WebSocket connection in the, uh, in the, in its own end. And then it's, uh, you pass in a pod name, you pass in the containers inside the pod and it gets you the, it gets you the, uh, it creates a request and then you can stream the request using request of stream. And uh, I'll show you the demo for that. So, so, so I'm gonna here. It's demo right here. Okay. So I'll run this program. So here I pass in, I, I give it namespace, I give it pod ID, and then I give it an Nginx, which is my container name, right? So this is the uh, stream. And because this is a stream, so it's, it, it doesn't end up. So it's, so it doesn't end ever. So uh, now if I put this, this is the Nginx IP, gives me Nginx. So as you can see the uh, time, date at which I latest ping it has been updated. So this is, I guess, 2nd December 15, 4, right? And let's, I, I don't know what's, what's the exact time for us right now. So let's just keep this in mind. So it's two triple five here, right? And now if I refresh this, it gives me more logs of the same thing. So I, 
did a get request for root and this was my system. So this is log streaming. The idea here is to actually use this, get a log stream, then create a WebSocket connection with UI to stream the logs in the UI. Oh, so there's a project uh, which requires this. For example, we have uh, the idea of using a vis visual topology to stream logs and this is where we use it. So there are a few more areas you can find it. So uh, in case you want to test this out on UI, currently I, I didn't have it implemented yet, but in case uh, you have Kubernetes dashboard. So for me, I'm using this, basically open up my cluster. And I can open up to any of these and access these right now, or it's just given at this dashboard. Um, Given it, I apply the dashboard so you can see to the back. Okay, this is this. Now create a proxy. Um, So this is my uh, Kubernetes clusters uh, UI interface. And then I go to this and now here I can actually control my Kubernetes cluster, which is the, which is the example for uh, using or modifying your container deployments or pods through the uh, UI. And that's something we are trying to achieve in Meshri. That's the use case of having a log streaming API right here that does this on the UI side. I guess that's more of it. Um, yeah, that's 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 all. And if if you guys have any uh, questions on how it's done, let me know. Because that's more on how it works. Hey Anirudh, yeah, can you? Come back to that point one more time, please. Um, so you have these logs, you want to show that on the UI, measure UI? Yeah. Okay. Because, uh, like you need to show, uh, if the user expects, because we, we are service, we manage service measures, right? And inside mm -hmm. service measures, you have to manage the traffic. So knowing what, tra uh, what logs are running inside a container in a pod is also necessary. So you can verify the traffic. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Anyone else? All right. All right. Um. Well, hmm. 
Hmm. I'm thinking of other things that we can discuss, or that we can use this time to discuss. Um, is anybody working on anything that they want to discuss about? Or all right, uh, let me reframe that. Is anybody looking to work on something and haven't found anything yet? Mm. And also, is anyone facing any set of issues regarding measure, measure you or your measure backend? So I, I have a question. So if you want to set up um, measure mm. on the local compute, I mean local uh, local machine, maybe laptop. Yeah. Is that possible to build? Uh, yeah, yeah, to, it is. Instruction. Yeah, it is. So, Could you share the link? <coughs> or is it on GitHub? Um, uh, are you trying to build the MeshD UI or the MeshD um, server? No, the, the back end. Oh, all right. Um, the instructions should be in the documentation, actually. Okay. The quick start okay. guide should work. Okay, okay. So we can start. Okay. Nice. Um, which OS are you using? It's uh, Mac. Oh. Um, Brew should work for you. Yeah, okay. it's, uh, it's pretty simple. On Mac, it's pretty simple. You have a uh, Docker desktop, right? Uh -huh. So uh, you can simply do a make in make or use Docker Compose to deploy the backend. Also, the, uh, there there is another way where you could actually run the local code. Uh, but that's necessary when you're when you're doing dev. So yeah, you can do it on a local machine. I I did it on a cluster just because it's. Uh, easy for my laptop to stay alive. <laughs> All right. Um, also, if you just want to play around with Meshri without setting up locally, you can use Katakoro. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I'll try that. So it looks easy. Yeah. So. Yep. Um, Katakura environments are pre-built. You don't have to go do anything. Just go run yeah. machine. <laughs> All right. Um, so that's... does that go away after a while, after you play with it? Is it? Um, I think it's about, it runs pretty smoothly if you're active in the environment for about an hour or, six, or something around an hour. Okay, okay. So then it automatically destroys. Okay. Yep, if you refresh or if you close the tab, the environment goes away. Okay. And you can reload it. If you want to just test out the Meshri UI, I've actually uh, posted the URL of my uh, Meshri service here. You can. Oh, okay, awesome. It. Okay. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, that should work as well. All right. Um, anybody else? Anybody else trying to set a Meshri? <laughs> This is one of the more lenient calls because we have a shorter agenda today. So consider it a personal help session. Also, yes, thank you, Adina. Um, that would be great. If you find any errors in Karakoro, point them out to us and we'll fix them. Hello. Hey. Hello. Yeah. Hey. I'm audible. Yeah. Um, I have an idea about the layer five website. Can you show? Yes. Um. All right. Do you mean the left centric website? Yeah. A uh, footer page. Can you add uh, as a, uh, one of the cool stuff stores like a t shirt as a layer five logos? Um, do you mean something like brand merchandise? Yeah. Ah. 
all right uh, that's as a, a fair point as a, actually i'm a, uh, as a red hat website okay. so that is one as a cool stuff store as a okay. t-shirts and uh, many more things and that is the idea about the layer files as cool like a t-shirts and uh, many more oh uh, yeah uh, we cool do stuff. give out something as i suppose um badges and books and that of that sort uh this might be a better topic for the website call that happens on monday yeah 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 sure a uh, fair point though and let's discuss it on monday I'm sorry about the so slow pace of the call. We're a little short of the agenda items, and if well, if nobody else has anything at all, I suppose we could end the call early today. That would be a first for us. <laughs> we oh, actually do is. have other topics, and but um, a lot of people can't make it to the call today. some because of the linkery workshops some because they behind on individual projects huh. um so is there any new service mesh being added to meshry now is it anything in the pipeline other than what we see <laughs> um enjoy and express added most recently yeah um, is that the aspen yep. mesh or is it something different engines aspen um i don't think it's the aspen mesh anirudh is it All right. Um. So these are the service meshes currently supported by Meshri, and no, I'm not aware of any other currently in the pipeline. Okay. I was just curious, all right? Because we already have a bunch of them. So. Yep. Yes. Yeah. so there was a, a one other topic right i wanted to uh, i mean again curious about this so in kubecon there was a lot of discussion about uh, telco based you know um, basically service mesh focused on the non http type workloads right other supporting other protocols so is there anything uh, uh, in our, you know in our road map to get added to meshry any of those Anurudh, I'll let you take this one. I'm not really aware about this. If you can. Yeah. So what Meshri does provide is it's a um, it's like an operator over several service meshes. So if there is a service mesh that does interact on non-HTTP or HTTPS payloads, uh, then we can support that because there's no restriction on uh, what we can support and what not. but until there is and uh, there is a requirement for it uh, there are pretty lower chances on it being supported in meshry okay so right now the focus is on the smi compatible or is it that even so yeah it's a smi we have smi com smi compatible and we also have smp spec yeah so the current focus is having uh, most of the service mesh is compatible with those standards and we, if once we have those we can move towards getting more a uh, more service meshes into the fray got it okay all 
All right, uh, this is going great. Any other questions? And yes, uh, by the way, we do focus on the SMI spec on either judging, not exactly judging, but telling you if your service mesh is currently SMI confirmant yeah. and running performance tests to explain and prove the same so that you can analyze it better. Any other questions? So I'm all set. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thanks. Oh, yep. Anytime. All right, uh, does anybody else have anything else to talk about? This can be anything, any issue that you're working on, if you're looking to find something to work on, if you're trying to deploy or mesh you locally and you're having an issue. So Let me ask one yeah. more question, okay? Sure. Uh, it's, it's for uh, Anirudh. So yeah. for, for, uh, for the log streaming, um, component you wrote, right? Do you yeah. need any cluster level um, permission to be able to run that, um, run your component? So do I need to give it any cluster level permission? Yeah. Uh, service yes. account or so roles? The service account is required. So what, what it actually does is it uh, gets permission because if I have access to Cube APIs, basically the cert file, right? The config file, Cube config that basically acts as my authentication and that authenticates me into the cluster and then the API is executed. So I have to click create a client set which uh, needs authentication. But un unless I have the auth uh, required authentic authorization, I cannot uh, perform any APIs on the cluster. Yeah, okay. So did you have to specify any, you know, other, so, so you are running in the default namespace, right? That uh, that uh, sample. Yeah. So that did was that the service account you use, or is it something else with a special privilege or role? No, that that was just uh, that was just me using the main service uh, main service account, the okay. admin account. Okay. 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 Got it. Okay. It would still work if I have a service account, but uh, it it still needs like it it still needs a basic permission with uh, uh, giving, like you have to create a cloud AI, a, a IAM service account with required Kubernetes dashboard permissions. Okay. But in GKE, GKE, because you are the cluster admin, you automatically have that access, yeah. right? That role, okay. Cool, thanks. Yeah. All right. Um, what were you saying, Anurag? No, that's just with a GK that I we do need a service account to uh, get authenticated into the cluster. Otherwise, we, the um, command for any any of the client set would not be created properly. So you won't be able to ping the cluster and get logs or push some commands. All right. Um, again, does anybody have any other questions? I know I'm repeating myself, but well, this would be a great chance for you to go ahead and ask them on anything, either about machinery or how it works, mm -hmm. or any of the other three reasons that I've already explained 10 times. <laughs> And uh, yeah, so if anyone's looking to work on Meshri CTL, we do have a brand new set of commands that uh, are planning to be in place. So that they are Meshri CTL mesh commands. They deal with life cycle of uh, mesh uh, service meshes. And 
that's an interesting good and, and a good point to start into service meshes and mystery. So if you're interested, do let me know or uh, ping in the mesh mystery CDL channel so we can get you started. Yeah, on that, like, uh, on that issue, is it really required to be completed in a specific, like, mm. early, Actually, very early, uh, like, is it uh, required a very short time of the uh, deadline? I no, there that. is no deadline. So if, uh, if, you're, if you want to pick it up, you can just implement it because uh, it's, it's community, right? So. Uh, you want to do it, you you uh, work on it, learn from it, because the main idea is you learn from it and you give back by contributing to us, right? Yes. So you learn you learn through it. You If, if you feel uh, like if you find it interesting, you create, you either implement more commands of the same area and then maybe you get uh, more inf information now, service measures work, how uh, clusters are maintained, and uh, you'll be dealing a lot with uh, with measure CTL. The main focus would be uh, running Go and executing commands on Kubernetes cluster. Sometimes you might also have to uh, modify the measure backend to support some handlers, which you will then use with measure CTL. So it's it's just a client, right? You still need to interact with the backend. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Like I, I would love to work on that. Just wanted to know if there is. Yeah, a great. Uh, Shriti, last meeting, I guess with uh, I must have posted the doc. At least the right doc. So could you scroll a bit? Yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> mm, did we have it here? Uh, no, I think it was the. Community meeting. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you want me to open that doc? Okay. Uh, give me two minutes or oh, one minute. Uh, I'll I'll share the doc exactly. That's uh, that's a quick. Quick start that I created from my experience. Mm -hmm. So, in case you find it uh, helpful, it would be great. <laughs> so, I'll just share it. Um, try to mesh with CLI mesh. This is Zoom. You have this. Uh, Zoom, Shriti. Oh, uh, just like no, you can share your screen. I just pass it to Zoom. Yeah, yeah. I uh, just like it should be visible now. Yeah. So, so this is this is my guide which I created and. Um, uh, you just need to know the prerequisites that are the Golang basics. At least the, uh, like, you need to know the hello world in Golang. And some, ex some or even no experience because uh, the idea is learning on the way of working, right? So you can get experience, uh, do a, like, run a Cobra hello world command and get experience from that. And then you can look into this. Then the architectural idea of meshery, most of it you can find in, on the documentation. And in case you have any questions, you can uh, ask in the uh, meshery CTL channel. Then these are the different properties of service meshes because in meshery CTL service, uh, meshery CTL mesh, you're basically working on service meshes. So you need to be considerate about what properties of a service mesh we are considering. So these are the uh, uh, properties and the main main thing to be focused on the supported ops, the config uh, template configuration or example configuration, and then the name port host. Right. So these so there is a possible approach, and this is how I work on 
mesh figure or how I used to. So this is the possible approach. So you can follow these steps exactly. <laughs> and it, it's, it's a faster way because uh, I try to optimize it as, as better I can. So if you do it this way, you can actually create useful commands in, I don't know, five minutes, five to 10 minutes. You can just create a new useful command. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, this is actually pretty great. I do not remember seeing this. It was, I posted it about a month ago. Ah. I should remember seeing this still. <laughs> uh, all right, I'll include a link to this in the meeting minutes for anybody who wants to go ahead and try it. Um, there you go. It is an unofficial guide. Just so you guys know. <laughs> Don't blame me if something happens. All right. Um, it looks pretty right though. At a first look. Shouldn't something shouldn't go too wrong, even if yeah. it does. <laughs> so th these are the basic commands. Uh, Shreedi, can you go a bit down? Yeah, sure. Lower. So these are the commands that uh, that are that can be implemented. So the mesh list, uh, which basically lists all the adapters through on which you can create service meshes. Then you have mesh create or deploy to create a service mesh. And uh, if you go down, yeah. you have uh, remove or delete or destroy. So this basically delete. Uh, destroying the service mesh and below that you have uh, something else below, below. Uh, so this is deleting right and uh, can you go below yeah. there must be another command yeah and mesh workload so here you have list and apply so there are certain example workloads that exist with the service mesh so for example for istio you have book application you have http server uh, these are sample applications that are provided by Istio itself. So we do we, we do support those application, applications as workloads. And so you would be able to do mesh workload list and get those applications to apply on your cluster. Because obviously if you are if you want to test a service mesh, you need an application. Otherwise there's no point on running a, a service mesh itself. And apply actually applies the workload, and the area here would be you can also apply config uh, workloads, which is the next step here. So once we have met, uh, workload apply, we we will have mesh config apply, which is which would basically be applying um, application configuration and uh, creating all required cluster, the containers and pods on the cluster. So that's on service mesh operations and using CLI for now. All right. Um, I hope that helps you, Sudan. Yeah. <laughs> That should be a pretty decent guide to at least get started with. And all right, we're eight minutes short of the meeting deadline. And for the last time, I promise in this particular call, I'm asking for any other questions. If you do have them, speak out. Yes, actually, as we're talking about the CTL, literally mm -hmm. CTL. Um, you know, there's this global flag uh, config and I just can't get it to work. So it doesn't pick up my configuration. I don't know whether this is a uh, uh, bug or whether I do something. Uh, do you have an uh, open issue for it or mm -hmm. uh, we can discuss more on this call, but it's short, right? We, do, we only have eight minutes for that. <laughs> 
So what okay. can you say? I didn't understand what you uh, said. Uh, do you have an open issue for it? No, uh, no, no. I, I just wonder whether whether it's actually not working or whether uh, I do you show how it's the supposed error? to work. Uh, there's no error. It's just uh, that. Yeah, it's, it's not working. So, yeah, it, it is ah, supposed okay. to work. And it's not. Okay. It is supposed to work because uh, we pass in config. So for yeah, so meshery CTL has a different config. It has it is meshery CTL config. Uh, the config file on meshery CTL. So I guess some uh, part of the code must not have been applied. Uh, that can be looked into if you uh, if you find if you get the error again. Uh, do you know yeah. create an issue for that? Yeah, but there's no error. It's just not working. Yeah, just point the command <laughs> on which it's not working because it's hard to look and look through all the commands on mesh CTL and figure out yeah, no, where it's, it's the I can it's not just it's the it's just the system start and picking up the okay the system start okay the command and picking up uh, let me check where's the chat window here um, you know I just wondered is it supposed to work and it's not working is anyone using it like this one all right okay uh, this yeah, it's supposed to work actually. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, is it uh, okay? It's just not. So yeah. Yeah, I'll have a look into so it. So it works. It works. No, I can. Um, it works, but it works for you. You use it, and it works. Yeah, I use it uh, sometimes. Okay, weird. Weird stuff. Okay. That was my question. Right. Um, Nicole, do you need help with that? Or would you be figuring out yourself and then asking? No, oh, I just not use it. I just replaced the standard uh, config file with uh, my changes. Ah, all right. So, so uh, if I have time, and then I can look into it and create an issue somewhere to right. see. But this is it's supposed to work and it, this is the right command to actually you know like uh, if you just want to start one or two adapters mm -hmm. then this would be the way of doing it right yep that would be the way of doing it we yeah, already and, tried uh, doing that actually with config flags it hasn't been implemented in the actual code yet but it we came up with an approach and it worked and it's existent in one of the uh, repositories i think it was implemented in one of the labs for katakura itself because we had um, a particular use case for it. And I think Nupur is working on that at the moment. Okay. All right, uh, thanks for that question. Anybody else? You're welcome. <laughs> thanks for the answers. Anytime, uh, anybody else? <laughs> All right, I'll stop asking the same question over and over again. Thank you for joining in everybody. Thank you for staying with it, even though it was a bit little slow today. And that's, that's it. Thank you for coming on, same time next week. And I promise we'll have a more full agenda. Okay, thank you, Shriti. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. Thank you.